Now I don't have the time, I think. I'm just going to talk over this beautiful <laughs> thing. Um, so my title for this portion of the project is AmeriCat in the Garden of Eden. Um, I'm going to just introduce the project as a whole while that lovely thing goes. But for this talk, I'm going to be focusing in on the problem of disgust as an aversion to formlessness that shows up in the wet food ads and the maneuvering required of us to make that cohere with the slippery empathy this commercial produces. In her elaboration of the ethical identity created in Becoming With Animal Companions, Donna Haraway puts forth the vision of a communal table at which everyone is both eating and being eaten, and indigestion signals the beginning of our ethical commitment to these companions and co-eaters. Beginning with this metaphor, I propose reading this commercial in Frisky's Feed the Senses campaign, which highlights the ritualistic qualities of what they term feeding wet, as demanding a particular sort of empathetic imagination. What would my cat like to eat must be accessed via a balance of self-projection and a sequence of modeling I'll describe in a moment. The commercial ultimately facilitates empathetic identification by removing both cat and owner to a realm of fantasy, successfully eliding our possible distaste and difficulty empathizing with the cat as a hunter. Despite its commercial motivations, this model of empathetic identification can be turned to more properly ethical pursuits on the level of the individual, such as cat adoptions modeled on personal ads or the controversial procedure of kidney transplants in cats. At the environmental level, however, this mode of identification elevates the house cat to an imagined extra environmental position, the position we imagine ourselves to occupy outside the food chain, from which we derive our privilege to eat indiscriminately and never be eaten, except for toxoplasmosis and that. Um, and the commercial strange aesthetic derives from the impossibility of this position. Recent declamations against the domestic cat as threatening to biodiversity point to the ethical shortcomings of this model and its elevation of love between individuals across species, rooted in American individualism and consumerism, and therefore permissive of pets' indiscriminate killing of, say, songbirds, an attitude with possible roots in the vision of commercial variety high on the food chain produced by this commercial. And maybe I can get another one going. There's tons of these and they are all equally beautiful. Um, and the, the difference between the wet and dry food ads in this campaign illustrates, among other things, the greater effort to persuade human viewers to engage in this ritual of feeding wet. And if one wanted to take this entirely too far, the difference could be expressed in terms of science fantasy as that between the heterotopic impossible space of the wet food ad and Suvin's description of the novum as the distinguishing feature of SF producing a tension between readers and the alterity introduced by the novum. But anyhow, this persuasion overcomes the problem of disgust by resorting to form. Um, both in appeals to empathetic identification by translating the wet food labels into terms like pate, scramble, souffle, and by extensive use of modeling, um, both in the creation of the universe of the commercial and in its insertion into broader commercial discourse. There is further appeal to the bad conscience of the pet owner, this being both God and insufficiently God, which significantly takes place on the same register as the initial empathetic identification potentially revealing the discontented Americanness of AmeriCat, the problem of formlessness as isolation from the communal table. This tension between love and disgust comes through clearly in the disparate levels of imaginative e effort required to engage the wet and dry food ads. The dry food ads take place in our reality, or that of our cat, with the novum, if you like, being the animals that enter with the opening of the bag, almost like colorful ghosts of the platonic abstraction of species. Dry food is a relatively easy sell, but the wet ads require a well-nigh traumatic escape into the fantasy realm. The fantasy here is for the individual, and the status of the real, suspended and made strange, is entirely contained within the cat. The ritual, while obviously borrowing from the double sense of tripping, is that of setting the individual <laughs> cat on a path of discovery, a sort of parallel life that can be re recast in terms meaningful to the human owner, but only to an extent. The labels on the cat food tins, souffle, etc., are efforts of tra at translation, but of what? Other cat food ads commonly emphasize this ritual feeding as a gift, one moment in a longer narrative of the relationship. They are selling cats, and only incidentally cat food. This com er, the commercial targeted toward a buyer who cannot envisage themselves as the consumer of the product 
is most familiar possibly in the guise of the mission-oriented, nearly behaviorist way that men targeted by jewelry commercials are giving to their wives. Um, the closer we get to the substance being sold, the more modeling produces a heightened sense of form. The environment of the first commercial is based on individual characters, such as the turkey, whose dances are then choreographed and modeled by humans, and whose variation between individuals determines the characteristic of the larger landscape of turkey land, cow land, what have you. The result being, and this is also the case with the dry food commercials, something that does not look like a turkey, or like turkey as we might eat it, but rather a symbol or a character that at some point signifies turkey flavored, and then proceeds to soften anything remotely carnivorous about the venture. What does it mean to emphasize the cat eating animals in a way so profoundly different from us eating animals? Our own edible buildings Roman in this mode would likely be a horrifying production. Um, the necessary isolation of this mode, the individualism of AmeriCat, is a feature across all interactions modeled on this individual humanizing, I don't want to say anthropomorphizing, empathetic imagination. The adoption ads phrased as cheeky personal single white short hair, or kidney donation in which the adoption of the donor cat is made to stand in for an expression of volunteerism or consent. Further, this vision of eating is surprisingly antisocial. While a human eating Italian food, as the commercial producers suggest in their behind the scenes video, which is amazing, um, may want to feel transported to Italy, it's more likely that said human is using food to connect to other humans with an anxiety about, about the emphasis placed on not eating alone that appears symptomatic. This cat, on the other hand, turns even further inward through eating, is encountering only diplomats from the species, or not even species, but species of flavor that it is eating. There is no garden of cats on the other side of the river, only more food. So what makes this opening of the tin resonate so strongly as a possible Edenic gesture, either the offering of the serpent or that of Eve? This antisocial eating is not something we find in dog food commercials. Dog food, rather, is a healthy way of returning the animal to our table, sharing meat that looks like our meat, even alluding to the gesture of cooking for the animal. We go back to our history with the dog, the hunt undertaken together, or at least a lifetime of sneaking table scraps. The cat these commercials project, on the other hand, is much less interested in us. In fact, the other common mode of televised human-cat relationships um, is the increasing emphasis on more or less sympathetic iterations of freak show on TLC televised cat ownership that takes our disgusts and discontents and revels in them produces sloppy strange hybrids of cat humans people who constitute themselves through their cats hoarding them such that they approach the state of mass nouns capital C cat like meat people who eat cat treats and kiss their animals and cross lines of relating that are formless and not the ecstatic delusion formlessness but people who have taken this whole pet thing too far and make us shudder maybe also compensate us for the guilt we feel at providing our cats only a diminished life. In projecting a cat who is interested in food in the way that we supposedly are onto the television, we are identifying with the cat on the register of consumption, of being American in this particular way, and the strangeness of, say, morning monsters with the feet. Mm -hmm. um, might point in our identification with AmeriCat to what we fear in this individualism. The song in the aired version of avoids words closely associated with eating. Rather, feeding the senses is more, part, er, is more being part of an environment than is eating. There's a disturbing flash game on their site called Boing Boing Crunch that's just infinitely feeding treats to a cat on a pillow and the high scoreboards of people indefinitely feeding their time into this advertisement and treats into this cat in the thousands. Um, but in trying to produce a commercial for cat eating and not just cat ownership, eating for pleasure, Frisky's has to stop short at feeding the senses. The eating that, as the song has it, Frisky's makes happen, is obviously not the way to bridge any interspecies gap or to reinstate an environment. The experience of Frisky's is solipsistic, a cat owner's dream of a cat engaging with its own dream of what a cow might be. <laughs> Creating a world in which the cat is eating separates the cat from eating in the world takes it away from the communal table and brings it no closer to us either. Finally, what of the suggestive comparison between commercial variety and biodiversity? The domestic cat is coming under fire for destroying as many as 3.7 million songbirds annually, hunting for pleasure or capriciousness, whatever we project onto it. And our reactions to this are variously disgust and defensiveness, 
always already a projection of our own environmental carelessness. Mm -hmm. Our view of ourselves as a part that has finally produced cats that are apart, that must be kept apart for the sake of beings actually in the environment, capital E. They are tiny, furry singularities in this imagination, absorbing into themselves as much of the world as we allow them, out of bad conscience or empathy, demanding a negotiation between this loved being and the world at large, at too large. The seat of this commercial in Le Petit Prince is suggestive. On its solitary asteroid, a mare cat can eat everything, and rather than being world poor, possesses its entire world by this eating. <laughs> at the cost of having no outside world, nothing outside the known. 